guys it is Wednesday I've been broadcasting quite consistently um, and I, I used to do it only on Mondays and Wednesdays and I, I definitely know that the goal is not to necessarily do it as much as I've been doing it here lately um, but I'm forgetting what day it is I hope you guys are doing well I'm talking about another one of my favorite subjects and that is branding, um, branding your, your business, building your business. But I want you to look at it from a different perspective this particular time. And you see in the title, it says from a generalist to a specialist. And before we get, you know, too far into our broadcast, a couple favors I'm going to ask of you as you come on. If I say something that helps your business and your life in any measure. Be sure to tap the screen for hearts. Show your girl a little love. Um, let me know that it's working for you. It's impacting you. And then also there's a button on your left-hand side. You can press it. It says share. Share it out with someone else who could use the information. If you're watching me on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And secondly, I want you guys to um, bring me your mind for this particular one because there are definitely some things that a specialist does different from a generalist. And one, not that it's the most important thing, but you are in business and you're in business to profit. But if you think about it, a specialist earns more coin, more revenue than a generalist. And the example that I love to use is that of a your general practitioner <clears throat> or your family physician and a specialist so there are significant differences in those even before you ever go to the actual appointment so with your general practitioner one the code is less than it is when you go to see a specialist even when you go to see a specialist for something particular that you need expert opinion expert skill on when you look at the copay for the specialist you already know that it is somebody who has become an expert in their field or they're really good at what they're doing. At least that is definitely the perceived value because the copay for the specialist is higher than it is for the general practitioner. So that's just an example. And if you think about your family physician as a general practitioner, although they're doing well, the specialist has done some things that the general practitioner they didn't do, right? And so they are also being rewarded on that level. So I'm gonna share with you guys today some of what the journey looks like when you're moving from a generalist to a specialist. And most people start their business based on a craft that they're good at, and it will open the door, it will make room for them. Uh, many open their business off of that given skill set that they have, and you know they may do they may be comfortable in their pursuit, right? In that lane of comfort as a generalist. Here are a few things about um, a generalist. Normally, there's so many people in that exact same lane. I'm gonna say that one more time. When there are generalists in any specific field, whether it's coaching, teaching, training, you're in the beauty industry, you, you provide a service to someone, you're a realtor, a seamstress, a videographer, um, whatever it is that you do, when you're just general, um, there are a lot of people doing what you do. So that means that you also are kind of like sharing the, you're splitting the pie with, with a whole lot of people. And when consumers are shopping with a general mindset of, I just need a, a coach, any old coach. I just need a photographer. I just need a videographer. I just need someone to sew this dress or tack this up. Um, I just need a stylist, somebody to tell me how I can put my clothes on. When the mindset is just on that, they normally have tons of people that they can choose from. So some people find themselves, you know, just Googling. Back in the day, they would just go through the phone book, flip through the phone book and find one. Uh, but when someone is really looking to get extreme value, they are looking for a specialist. And I find that the majority of the consumers today are looking for specialists more than they ever were because there's so much exposure 
on social media as to, you know, different markets and different industries, they don't know what to choose from. So they think about their specific needs that they have and they look for people who specialize in those particular things. And we're going to talk about that um, on today. Um, when you come on, let me know in the comments, if you're catching me on the replay, hey there, replay viewer, thank you so much for joining. I appreciate each and every one of you for the time spent uh, uh, <clears throat> the trainings and the broadcast, but make sure that you're communicating that you're here. Tell me your name. What type of business do you run? If you got a question, you know, drop that in the comments. I'm pretty good at coming back and um, answering and responding to comments on the video. I'm going to do a quick introduction and then I want to start with um, as it relates to a generalist and specialist, I want to start with something that I learned from a psychologist, some study that he did. And guys, if you notice, so you'll hear in my introduction, because if you've been following my videos, I talk about the mind a lot and the psychology behind things. And it's just, you know, it's my lane. So I do a lot of um, studying and training in that area because it allows me to help my clients on a much deeper level and allows them to get results quicker, sooner, faster. So I am Tanya Wilson Cherry. I am a growth strategist, so growth is super important to me. I believe that things are changing around us all the time. However, although things are changing around us externally, it doesn't always negate whether or not we change with it or we change progressively enough to be able to not just sustain, but to soar with all of the different changes and things that are occurring. So I believe that we should be intentional about our growth. So I am a growth strategist, helping women just like you to grow their business and their life, um, helping them brand it, build it, and profit in it. Those three things are super important. You'll also hear me talking in measures of threes. For whatever reason, three is my number. Um, I teach from a three-point perspective, abundance mindset, which is huge, guys. Um, I did a training recently on shifting to abundant mindset, and I talked about the process that it takes to actually get to the space where we, we're thinking on a greater level and how abundant thinking impacts every sing, single thing that we do. Even what I'm talking to you about on today, um, being going from being a generalist to a specialist, is a step of abundant thinking. And you'll, you're going to be able to see how it ties in as we move forward. But I focus on abundance thinking, helping my clients um, step into higher version, versions of themselves, understand their value, right? And be able to charge it with ease and create the business and lifestyle they love. And I teach personal growth and business building. So those are my threes, my three babies. You'll hear me talk about threes often. I actually have an academy called 3D Success, founded on three core pillars, um, destiny, dollars, and discipline. So I'm the founder of 3D Success Academy, and um, I am doing what I absolutely love to do. I am seeing the transformations with uh, myself as one, but with my clients, and they are like long-term transformation where they're taking these thought concepts and these strategies and being able to apply them over and over and over again um, in their life mm -hmm. and, and get results. So that is who I am <clears throat> in a nutshell. And I want you guys to be fair. Make sure at some point when you come on, you let me know you are here and where you rock out. What? How is it that you serve in, in the marketplace? So I was sharing with you that one of the best examples I love is you know, as far as it relates to being a generalist and a specialist is, you know, the doctors, a general practitioner and then a specialist. But I wanted to give you guys some other examples from a study that I found. So there's a psychologist by the name of John Hayes who did a study on musicians. And one of them was Mozart. So I found the um, article to be interesting because my daughter plays the piano. So before her playing the piano, um, I probably wouldn't have been reading, you know, an article on Mozart. But this one was um, specifically important to me because it detailed some of the differences between a generalist and a specialist. 
because here we go back to mindset. It is really a mindset. So when we think about um, Mozart, and this was from the study that John Hayes did. For those of you who are readers too, Malcolm Gladwell actually is known in our time for talking about um, putting in 10,000 hours and becoming an expert. But the study was actually formed from a guy named John Hayes, who was a psychologist. I love psychology, guys. So I'm not a licensed psychologist. I am a certified life coach. And psychology, abundance mindset, all of that just rolls into how I spend quite a bit of my time in my studies. But in the study that John did, he shared that many of the uh, people who became known as genius or experts in the musical field, like Mozart, Bach, uh, people like that, had actually trained for about 10 years before they ever had their really their greatest work before they ever became really really known as the genius that they are they are they are or were now the 10 years people call it the 10 years of silence and that 10 years did not mean they weren't reaping results they weren't earning revenue or anything of that nature but it was something about that 10 year mark that they began to really gain exposure and i found it interesting because one of the things that they did more than anyone else did was practice. One of the things they did more than anyone else did was practice. Let me give you guys an example. So many of you who will come on and watch this have been doing what you do for quite some time. It may be at the 10-year mark. Um, you could be three-year mark, five-year mark, 20-year mark, right? And so all of the time and effort that you've put in into doing the thing that you do is considered practice. Somebody put practice in the comments. But one of the things that was significantly different about those who become specialists is they're not doing just general practice. So when we go to work and we do what we do for 10, 15, 20 years, um, we of course are practicing that thing that we do, but it's more of a general practice. And this was a revelation that I had in my own life about how things were happening um, unintentionally. So I was having unintentional success, but not necessarily intentional or deliberate success. And what the difference is in the people in the musical world who became geniuses after their 10 years of silence is because they were having what's called deliberate practice. Deliberate practice. And I'll go more um, in into that. Um, another specific thing about people who become experts or specialists in what it is that they do, they love what they do. They love what they do. So many of you may go to work on a job that you do every day. You've been doing it for 10 years or 15 or five or however many years, but you don't necessarily love it. It pays the bills. You know, you've got some um, knowledge about what it is that you're doing. You could talk on... Um, a, a, a surface level about what it is that you're doing, but you don't necessarily love it. So the desire oftentimes isn't there to be deliberate about doing it when you aren't required to do it. You guys get that? So I was watching um, a, a young lady the other day who is a seamstress or tailor or whatever um, you would call it. She's a designer, right? A designer is a great word for it. And she was sharing, I, I never seen her do a live broadcast, but she had gotten an opportunity to go, um, I believe to like the Maryland or New York area, I can't remember, and be in a fashion show. And she was sharing how she could sew just about anything you brought to her. So she could hem your skirt, she could make your blouse, you know, make your pantsuit, dress, whatever. But what she absolutely loved was making um, ball gowns and, and dresses for formal events. Now, if you followed her story online, you will see that that is actually what she loves to do because she was making um, elaborate but classy prom dresses um, and 
formal wear for people, often those were the things that you would see her show. You would see, you know, some other items she made, but for the most part, that was the thing that she actually loved. And that was the thing that actually got her into the, the I don't know if, it's a, if it was a competition or whatever it was, but that was what opened the door for her. So normally the specialist has something that they really, really love. And that thing becomes the thing that they do over and over and over again. Now, a part of them being deliberate about them doing that thing over and over again, of course, it opens the door for opportunities and revenue. But most of the time, it's something on the inside of them that they absolutely love. So, for instance, just like you, there is something that you absolutely love doing. And here's one of the questions I was asked when I went to a conference uh, many years ago, I, I really wasn't in a position to go to the conference um, from a financial standpoint, but I knew I needed to do something different and that conference changed my entire life. But here's one of the questions that I, at, that, that I was asked while I was there. Now, there were about three profound questions that actually shifted my entire life. It is the reason why I consult, coach, teach, and train and mentor with you today. And so that investment from, it's 2020 now, that was 2011, nine years ago, it's still paying me back. And it was actually, you know, it was like, I call it an unpredictable opportunity. I just knew I needed something and I felt that had value. And I didn't exactly know all the fullness of what I would get out of it, but it changed my entire life. And one of the questions that was asked that changed my life was, what is it that you would do for free? If there was something, now we're not, we know you guys are in business, so we're not talking about giving your services away. Y'all bring me your mind here, right? But what is that thing that you would do for free? And mine was um, giving advice that helped people get to their next level, um, that would help them change their life. Now, I would have never been able to really put that into words had I not been asked that question. And so I'm asking you guys that on today too. Is it something inside your particular field that you absolutely love, that you actually would do for free, that it comes natural for you, that you're good at, right? Um, it, it's usually a gateway to where it is you desire to go. And I'll give you an example. So... Um, I had a student to take my 3D Success Academy boot camp. So that's no longer available. Um, my boot camp is now an academy. The boot camp was like 12 weeks, and the academy is a year long intentional um, program. But I had a client to take the boot camp. I, I started the boot camp maybe about three years ago and it has evolved and developed into the academy. And I thought about them when I was coming on for um, this particular topic and this particular training because they were, it was, their situation was unique. So they had not even gone to school for what it is that they were going to do when they took the boot camp, right? So they took the boot camp in advance. And I believe when we have advanced knowledge, the journey that we take is just completely different because we have examples of what to expect. We have guidance, we have more clarity, um, and we don't make as many um, mistakes as we would if we just kind of jump in. It's one of the reasons people go to school, get degrees that they don't even want to use, that they, they don't like, you know, um, it's because they lack what I call discovery. So discovery was a portion of the boot camp <clears throat> that is now turned into a full on uh, month long training inside our academy. But it allows someone to discover their superpowers, you know, what's unique about them, what's going to cause them to stand out in the marketplace. And it's normally something aligned with something they naturally are good at or they naturally love. So this particular student um, of the boot camp had not gone to you know the school for the trade that they were going to do. They went to the school. Now this is what happened in a three year time frame, and it may not have been three. It's maybe three years at this point, maybe two and a half. But they um, they came to the boot camp. They got really really clear on what it is that they wanted to do. They went to school for the trade. 
they um, every class course educational opportunity that they took was in alignment with that unique gift so many of you who are coming on have taken classes courses all kinds of stuff that you didn't finish um, they're just still sitting on a computer things of that nature right or maybe that you feel was a waste of your investment because it wasn't necessarily what you needed at that time now what happened is because she got in a space of discovery about how at least the next three to five years of her life was going to be she knew exactly what to go and be educated on and the things you know as it relates to that particular skill set the brand building the brand and the business is different from the actual skill set that you're using within the brand right so she knew which trainings to go to and she went straight to the top and chose some of the best experts in that particular field and then a year later she spent a year of extensive training under another company who specialized in that thing this is what vision does for you all this is what discovery does for you all it eliminates some of the i'm lost i don't know what to do i'm stuck stuff that normally goes on in the entrepreneurial journey because there's no clarity because we haven't discovered like who we are and who we are is what develops the brand but in that time she spent almost a year because of course she was my student so i've watched her journey and stayed connected with her as well and she only took classes that were in alignment with what would cause her to become, to become a specialist so now people seek her out for that particular thing right not for 50 different things that fell under the umbrella of what she was licensed for but for that particular thing it allows her to actually be able to charge more um she's you know trained under some of the best she has a great resume behind it and she now opens she now has her own business so she's no longer you know working for a company she works for herself and this is in a three-year time frame and there are people who've been doing what they do for 30 years as um, self-employed entrepreneurs who are still uncertain about their path and so most oftentimes those who become specialists and experts have gotten clear on what it is they really really love and what they want to do and they become like great at it not just good I also thought about because um, I'm giving you guys some examples of how uh, the process of business building and brand building becomes um, the thing that causes you to shift from being a generalist to a specialist so my daughter went to a school of arts last year for and her major was dance they didn't have they were supposed to have their high school open hey there uh, this particular school year that we're in but they had some um, building restraints that didn't allow them to open the high school but she stays connected with the school and one of her family members now attends the school and referred her for an opportunity. So what they needed was someone to come in and choreograph one of the performances that they were going to do at their big production. So my daughter, you know, she was a little nervous about it. Of course, I, um, you know, helped her to really see that I thought it was a great idea for her and, and to think about process it and at least give it a try which she's so glad that she did because she had an amazing time uh, teaching and training and choreographing the other girls and my daughter has leadership qualities and so it allowed her to also operate in her gifts something that she loved but this is the next thing that happened guys it also opened the door for a paid opportunity so she she was asked they said that they hadn't had that much um, growth or progress the entire time they had been trying to get it together and they asked her not only to choreograph that group but to choreograph another group and then on top of that an opportunity for it to be a paid opportunity for her so i share that because what we become specialists at is normally something that we love like i love helping women get to their next level create futures bigger than their past i love seeing the results uh, and the transformation of their lives changing and so because I love doing that the things that I do the practices that I do 
I mean, I'm not saying that I don't push through some things or I don't have to overcome some things in order to make it happen. But at the heart, at the core of my heart, I absolutely love it. So most generalists, um, most specialists are able to operate in their area of gifting because they've decided what they really love. Now, I'm going to give you guys an example that's going to be um, more real to you guys and actually it, uh, he has been in the news quite some time because of the tra tragic incident that occurred with him. But there was a guy, let's see what the guy's name was. Did I write his name down? I mean, I know I wrote the guy's name down that I wanted to talk to you about, but let's say Rob. So Rob is actually like a conditioning and strength training coach. And he was coaching some of the elite athletes at for the Olympics one year. And he wrote a small... Um, I guess, uh, response to in an interview, and it was about Kobe Bryant. He said he had gone to some type of entertainment thing like 3.30 in the morning, and at 4.45 in the morning, his phone rings. And he looks at the phone, and it's Kobe. And he said he answers the phone nervously, and Kobe says, hey, you know, I was just wondering if we could go work on some conditioning. Now, the guy is saying to himself, who is the coach? Now, this is the coach. He's saying to himself, I just went to sleep at like 3.30. This is Kobe. But of course, you know, he's rocking out in his role. He gets up, he goes, and he meets Kobe at the facility. This is what he said Kobe did. He said Kobe did conditioning and training from 4.30 in the morning to 6 in the morning. Then from 6 to 7, he did strength training. And then Kobe practiced from 7 o'clock to 11 o'clock. All of this. Now, check this out, guys. This was before the regular practice that they were about to have. Y'all don't hear me. So one of the things that I do is I study a minimum of seven to eight hours every single day, like clockwork. I've been doing it for years. Now, at this point, it is part of my lifestyle right? In the beginning, it had to be an intentional decision. But one of the reasons why I study to that measure is because it is in connection with my vision. So I had this thought of becoming the best coach I could be, right? And so I had to decide what does that look like? And my reasons were to be able to give my clients the best results and also to be able to position myself to create the business and lifestyle that I love that supported the vision that I have. So some of the things that I do, I broadcast often, right? <clears throat> now, broadcasting fits several different things for me. So because I have this vision that I've already set out, dates, time frames, understanding that some of the dates may not always match up, but my intentions will be there. Broadcasting not only benefits me from um, being able to provide value for you, but it also gives me deliberate practice for something that I have set out on my timeline and my vision for three years from now. Do you guys get that? But it's intentional. So let me give you guys, you know, some slight definitions. Deliberate practice, what most people are doing, right, are just simply practicing. They're going to work, they're doing what they do because it earns revenue, it gives them money. They may even like what they do, but it's more of um, mindless repetition. So many of you, if you've been doing it long enough, you can do what you do without even thinking about it. It's just like driving um, a car. We can get in a car and get to our location if it's somewhere that we go to often and we, we're not like really thinking about the fact that we drove it. We're just doing it, right? That's when we are just practicing. That's where uh, the saying, it doesn't matter the number of years that you've been doing something, but the level of growth that you've achieved during it. So we can have someone who's done something for 20 years and someone who's done something for three. And the person for three can be getting more opportunities, can be being paid more, and their work can be extensively greater than the person who has been doing it for 20 years. And normally what the difference is, is because the person who's been doing it for three years has deliberate practice. They've been intentional about specific things that they were going to do. Prime example, the student that was in my 3D success um, 
boot camp. Hey, Tasha, how are you, dear? It is the difference. So there's deliberate practice and then there's just regular practice. So you go to work every day, you, you're doing things, you're getting better at what you're doing, but it's not deliberate. So experts and specialists are deliberate. When we think about the example I gave you all of Kobe, he was deliberate. He was having deliberate, deliberate practice on specific things. One of the things he said he was going to do, he was going to shoot 800 hoops before he left. So he wasn't basing it on a certain amount of time. I share with you all that I study and train about seven to eight hours every single day. I don't think about, well, I'm a study from two to three, um, five to nine. I, I don't think about the time anymore. It has become you know, part of my lifestyle because those are intentional practices I'm making because of where I want my vision to be for my life. And when you look at your life, if you are in an environment that helps you to really see, okay, this is my vision for your for my life. What are the deliberate intentions and actions I'm going to have to take? What deliberate practices? When you're in an, in an environment that can highlight that for you, it will say, these are the things that you need to do. And that's what vision has done for me. That's what Kobe's vision did for him. It started with his love of basketball at an early age. He was practicing more than some you know adults who play ball um, at 13 years old, but it's because of deliberate practice. And most people are only doing what's called mindless repetition is general practice. We talked about your general practitioner as in your doctor when we first came on. He's a general practitioner. But the specialist, there's most specialists when we think of like a doctor, they are up all mornings, um, all times of the morning studying, researching, figuring out this type of thing, how the joints are going to work, whatever they specialize in, that thing is usually a part of their lifestyle. And that's what, you know, studying the mind and ending and, and thinking about my client's process and strategy has become for me. It is a lifestyle. I am intentional and deliberate about becoming the best coach because I can offer more value for my clients like that. Remember I share with you, you can also tell the difference in a general practitioner and a specialist because the copay is different. Lord have mercy, y'all don't hear me. The copay to see your general practitioner is going to be different from the copay that you pay to see the specialist. And the same goes for you. So when you get to the point where you're clear, like this is what I'm going to specialize in. This is what I'm going to be known for. This is how I'm going to position my brand. So remember I shared with you all that um, John Hayes did a study, he's a psychologist, on these famous musicians like Mozart and Bach and just wondering what is it that they do? What was the journey that they took to become the genius or the specialist that they're known for? And one of the things he stated was the 10 years of experience or the equivalence of 10,000 hours. So this is the reason why someone who's been doing something three years can go a lot further than someone who's been doing it 10, 15, or 20 because of the, the deliberate practice, the number of hours they actually put into it. Because you can be in something 20 years doing mindless repetition, but not really be putting in hours of practice or time, <clears throat> right? And what the difference is for those musicians um, people like Kobe, people like you all who desire um, specialists in your given field, myself, is belief. So there's got to be a measure of belief that there is something greater, that you can do it on another level. Number two is giving yourself permission. So you're going to have to give yourself permission to sometimes not be accepted in certain rooms because what you are doing is actually outside of the normalcy of the average person. But that same permission that keeps you out of certain rooms will put you in greater rooms. Do you guys get what I'm saying? So you have to give yourself permission to not necessarily be doing what the average person is doing, to talk about what the average person isn't talking about. Generalists normally focus on the how. Specialists normally invite people in to you know, completely change the dynamics and their understanding and their belief about it. There's a difference, right? And the next thing that's different about people who become specialists is their positioning. Now, positioning is one of the things I teach inside our 3D Success Academy. I share with you one of our students who had taken the boot camp. It's because she's positioned, 
right? She took deliberate practice on the specific thing that we got clear about what her unique gifts and superpowers were. She didn't have to spend thousands of dollars on trainings in areas that didn't benefit where she was going, that didn't benefit in deliberately allowing her to practice and perfect the thing that would take her down the path of the vision that she wanted to go on. So your positioning is important. And some of you simply aren't positioned to receive the premium um, clients or the premium profits that you desire. So that's what I do. A part of what I do inside uh, 3D Success Academy is help you to position yourself. There are specific things that you should be doing. There are specific things that you should have even in your bios on social media. It's, some of those things are small things, but they can't be formed until you go through brand clarity, until you go through getting clear, until you design your destiny. So what is it that you really want to do? I asked the question on my most recent video. I said, what is it that you want to do? Don't look at your current situation and, you know, look at any, lim any limitations you may see now. What is it that you want to do? Because it's from that point that you begin developing a strategy so that you can your business out of default. Remember I said, you know, we drive um, and it's something we don't even think about. We're kind of like in default mode when we're driving. And many of you, your careers are on default mode. You're doing mindless repetition instead of deliberate. Here are five things that are in alignment with deliberate practice, right? So one is the word practice. You, it's something that you know, this is, I'm going to be practicing this thing, whether if you're deciding that maybe you want to grow your business to the point where you're no longer the service pro provider, you're the visionary, you're hiring people, you want to get to that space. You have to be deliberate about the practice of business practices. Do, do you guys get that? The next thing is repeated actions. So I'm a systems girl. Systems and strategies are my superpowers. I believe in them. I stand by them. I don't think your business should be funding your lifestyle. I, I, I don't think your business should be running your lifestyle. I believe it should be funding your lifestyle. And systems are things that allow you to repeat processes over and over without you always having to have your hand to that particular plow. So repeated actions is something that's in alignment with deliberate practice. Next is focus. So 3D is a year-long opportunity. This is one of the things that I understand. This is why as I was creating the academy and deciding who is this for, I knew it would have to be a special individual <coughs> because many people are used to doing mindless repetition for a year but deliberate practice is not something that they'd be willing to do for a year. So they'll go through and do the routine of what it is that they're doing, but not be in a space that's intentional about their destiny, where it is they want to go, their dollars, which is what's in um, in alignment with their business and um, creating life, and then the disciplines that are required. So deliberate practice does require discipline. But when we think about discipline, it's basically being committed to what you said you desire. And some people have dreams, goals, and desires that they aren't certain of what it's even going to take to make it happen. So it becomes repetition. But because the missing link is the how-to, what is it going to in order to make it happen. It's just something that they're repeatedly saying without actually seeing the results. Positioning is important, guys. It's not just about um, I go and, and my talent is going to do everything for me. There are practices that you have to do. There's positioning that you need for your brand in order to create a lane um, in the marketplace where you move from being the generalist to the specialist. And the next thing in alignment with becoming a specialist is having feedback in the moment. And that's where coaching, mentoring, and consulting, it comes in because you're getting feedback from someone who's already gone the mile. It's not just your own feedback because our own feedback will tell us, I've been doing this for years, <clears throat> 20 years, 10 years, 15 years, five years. I got this. That's what our feedback will say because we've been doing mindless repetition, but because we haven't been intentional and deliberate, I mean, we don't have another eye to say, well, actually, if you put more effort over here, it'll happen quicker, sooner, faster. 
when I look and I think about the number of people who are willing to continue doing the same thing for a year, but not be in a space or an incubator where they have the focus, they have the practice, the repeated action, and the feedback um, for a year, it always surprises me at the effort that people will make to stay in the same position. So my academy is founded on helping women step into higher versions of themselves, helping them create future in their past, focusing on the three pillars, their destiny, where is it they really desire to go, their dollars, the money, and then the disciplines necessary to make it happen. We go over things in business like marketing and branding. You, we do branding 101, brand cl clarity, um, brand awareness, creating uh, campaigns and things that bring awareness to your brand, doing things that are going to bring awareness to your brand. But we also talk about you because you are the person that's building the business. And so many people are not building things that they love. And that's when it becomes hard to step into that deliberate practice that's necessary to um, become a specialist and move out of being a generalist. I know, guys, that everybody is doing the same thing on social media and it looks attractive and it is going to take you a certain but there's a, a point where it starts to mesh and blend in together because there is no brand clarity. We have people in the same industry following people who are doing things in the industry and everyone is doing the same thing instead of really getting clear on who they are and create creating something unique that they can um, have a lane for and be the specialist. Specialists actually get paid more, guys. They do get paid more. Remember I said the copay, so for instance, the copay, if you want to think about copay and when you're signing up for a course, a generalist, the price may be one thing and then a specialist, the price is going to be different, but the results that you get are going to be different as well. I wanted to drop that thought of moving from a generalist to a specialist. It's one of the things I do with my clients in our brand clarity portion of even my one-to-one -one coaching, my renew strategy sessions, but definitely inside the academy, you get an in brand and then you're able to position yourself guys if you have deliberate practice in a specific area when it's time for you to reinvent you're already in a better position to teach coach and train which to me is a, another stream of revenue i think it's a wealth principle to be able to teach and coach and train because your intellectual property becomes the thing that actually creates the revenue for you. It can be re repeat revenue that you earn over and over again from one specific talk, one specific message, a concept, something that you do. But if you take deliberate practice, let's look at Mozart. You know, had he lived longer, he would have been able to begin teaching. He was conducting and things like that, but he could definitely teach. His stuff is still making money for him right now that he would be reaping. Hopefully somebody is getting in his family. But those, when you do deliberate practice on a thing and you're willing to put the time and the work in, you create another stream of revenue almost automatically. You begin being called out opportunities. You know, I understand that oftentimes I'm talking about the deeper things about branding um, other than your websites, logos, and pretty pictures. But I also have a vision that's bigger than just my right now, that's bigger than just general. And I want to invite you to move into that space in your life as well. Dr. Miles Monroe is known for saying dying empty. And to me, that is about really becoming authentically who you were designed to be. I talked about it um, last night on, on a training call, self-actualization, where we step into our fullest potential. And that is what specialists are actually doing. They're stepping into a new realm of potential for what it is that they're called to do in the world, how they're called to serve. And then the world pays them back generously for them. I'm going to leave you guys with two things. Um, one is a quote. Don't judge each day by the harvest that you're receiving, but judge it by the seeds that you are planting. Your practice, what you're doing deliberately, deliberately those are the seeds that, that reap the greatest harvest. It doesn't mean that you don't get some good harvest around the way, but when your vision is bigger than your past or bigger than where you are now, then you know that those seeds that you're sowing is for the big 
the big goal, right? You're going to do real good along the way on the journey, but you have an even bigger goal um, in mind. So that's one thing that I want to leave with you all. And for those of you who are serious and you know, I really want to um, reinvent. So maybe you've been doing something for quite some time and you're like, I need to reinvent. I need to discover who I am at this in my life, what it is that I desire. I need to design my destiny and find out the strategies and systems that I need in order to make that produce a profit. And I need the practice and I need the feedback um, in the moment from someone who's already gone the mile. If you want to spend um, some deliberate, intentional practice and time working on your brand, your, you know, your business and your life, I'd love for you to join us inside the Academy. Today, the early opportunity ends. So I've made it um, accessible. So you can join for as low as $3.97 to save your seat. There are weekly payment options that are $73 a week. The cost of a meal, you hanging out, maybe you just trading something of lesser value for something that's more important to you, something that's going to change your whole life. Monthly opportunities, a two and a one pay. The one pay to me has the best value because um, I was I discounted it. Um, endlessly offering you an opportunity to save on any retreats, classes, and courses we have outside of the academy, inclusive of the one-time fee um, discount. There are several options, and the weekly option ends tonight at midnight. If you're serious about moving from being a generalist um, into the lane of a specialist where you create a lane, you're attracting clients to you, no longer chasing them, and then you're moving into a more expansive space of growing your business and your join us. You can find all the details at renewfullcircle.com slash 3DA, renewfullcircle.com slash 3DA. Again, it's founded on three core principles, your destiny. We design your destiny. That's how we start out. Um, there are month-long trainings. I coach live twice a month. So you'll get your training the next week. I come and coach. You can ask questions. You have email access to me. We have productive rest months. So although it's a year-long track, you don't get new information or coaching um, two of those months. So July and December are reflective months. Those are, it's called productive rest. And I talk more in detail about it and more um, about it on the page. For those of you who are wanting to pay the one-time fee and you're like, I don't have all of that on one card and you want to use more than one card, there's an email address on the page where you can email me and then I can send you an invoice instead of you paying through the button that will allow you to um, pay the one-time fee with more than one card. It's an amazing for those of you who are really serious about the growth and expansion you want, not just in your business, but also in your life. Your business and your life are intertwined. They are. And when you think about where it is that you want to go, it will begin to call you into what you need to do next. So many of you who watch me are being called to my trainings. It's not by happen chance. Um, people who come and watch my trainings, I already know that they're on a different level. They have a different pursuit and purpose in their life that they've already started recognizing. There's a nudge, there's a call on the inside of them that is constantly and telling them to go higher, to step into a higher version of themselves. I'm not here for entertainment. Some of the things I say may entertain you, um, depending on what you consider entertainment, but I am here to impact you and empower you to really step fully into the next version of your life. life. Sometimes we take time for, for granted and the, the amount of deliberate practice that it actually takes. So I invite you to step into the next highest version of yourself. Come with an amazing community of women in business just like yourself growing their business and their life. Renewfullcircle.com slash 3DA, 3D Success Academy for Women in Business. We're moving from being generalists to being specialists.